Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouched. Last time we wrapped up a few of the moons we were missing here in Lake Lamode. Uh, we're now at 31 out of 33. We'll be getting one of those two moons today, the other one is the Sacred Path, which we'll be getting later on, when we get to the other side of the Sacred Path. Uh, but the main thing we'll be doing today is opening up that moon rock and starting on the post-game for this kingdom. Uh, there's one particular sub-area that will be unlocked by this moon rock, which I consider very, very difficult. Uh, and we're going to be making it a bit more difficult, probably, so... This video may take a while. <laughs> there we go. There's not a huge number of moons in the moon rock, as you can see. Uh, and there's only, yeah, one sub-area, but it's very hard, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, so the first thing we can do... We're going to go over here and do the race, because the race is relatively easy, and I like to get it over with. So, we've done the normal race. Uh, this second race is essentially the same thing, except there'll be a Gold Cooper, who's supposedly better at racing. But the Gold Cooper still doesn't know that you can just climb up to the ledge there, just by doing a fairly simple backflip and bouncing off Cappy. Which is what we'll be doing. So there's the Gold Cooper. But see, they're still going that way, they're going the normal way, so they're not going to have much luck. Because we're going to be cheating a little bit, a little bit. In fact, we'll be cheating a bit more because we're about to come over to this ledge here with the fish enthusiast lady and climbing up to the plaza that way instead of actually... There we go. I believe you can just cross this with a regular cap bounce rather than using the spinners. Yeah, you can. Uh, just to save some time, now I'm gonna... There we go. I was actually faster that time than I was last time. And it's even with the gold cooper that's supposed to make it harder, so... <laughs> yeah, that's an easy moon. <laughs> So yeah, that one's very, very easy. Uh, the sub-area is over there. Uh, we're not going to go into it just yet. We're going to try to do some of the other easier stuff first. Uh, what we want to do first is come over here and capture a Goomba from the plaza. I believe these are the only Goombas you can capture in the kingdom. There might be some in a sub-area, but these are the only ones you can use like in the kingdom proper. Basically what we want to do... I think we might need to make a, make a tower to do this. Uh, we want to get a Goomba over to where the Odyssey is. Uh, which is a little bit tricky. Because if you touch water, the Goombas instantly crumble for some reason. See, they all just crumble away. So what we've got to do is get, a, get over the water to the other side without that happening. Uh, there's plenty of Goombas to work with, so we're not going to have too much trouble. I forget exactly the right spot for doing this. Uh, I think if you just come right down the bottom here and then do a high jump. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now we're over here. All we gotta do is make our way behind the Odyssey because Goombat is over there and we want her to fall in love. What a cutie. Look at that cutie! And the moon matches her in this kingdom because she's pink! Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So that's two moons. She doesn't show up until you open the moon rock, so we do have to do that in post-game. Not really sure why. It doesn't seem like it would need to be locked off. It's... Like, it has to be done after the story because of the way the Goombas are positioned, but... Lots of the moons are like that, so I don't know. Uh, we're actually going to go this way for the first time, because there's a moon just in there that we want to get. As you recall, we didn't actually go this way before. Uh, what you're supposed to do here is capture this here zipper. There we go. And just unzip. This is supposed to be like a tutorial on how zippers work, because it's the first one in the game normally, but we skipped it. Yeah! And there we go, that's three moons. Uh, let me see. Uh, there's one more we can get out here in the first area, so we'll be doing that next. Uh, if you see, there's those two birds there. There was one bird before. You can see that the lower of the two birds is sort of sparkling. That's because there's a moon in it. And 
and we're going to have to chase that bird, which is going to be a bit annoying. As usual for these kind of moons, moons that are related, they're based on catching birds as they fly around. Um, but yeah, it just, it's just going to float around a lot, and we're just going to have to try to throw a, moon, throw a cappy at it, and the moon will come out. There we go. Okay, um, can we reach that? Uh, we should be able to. We might have to go over to the plaza over here. Maybe just backflip? There we go. Yeah! <laughs> I think that might have been a bit loud. Uh, I think my levels are a bit weird this morning, evening, tonight, compared to normal. Uh, okay, so that's all the moons over here except the sub area. I'm going to save that for last because it's hard and you're going to see why when we get in there. <laughs> Um, okay, so over here in the main area, there is a moon there on top of that platform. What you're supposed to do is go through the 2D area to get back up there. Oh, it's actually in the middle. Hang on. Maybe we don't need to go through the 2D area. I think I've forgotten how that moon works. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's actually closer to this end, so you probably don't need to use the 2D area at all. Um, that moon there. So, yeah, basically, I thought you had to get up to that other platform over there by going through the pipe, but I don't think you need to do that. I think if we just do a little twirl here, we should be okay. Yeah, we'll be fine. Let's, let's do it without the twirl, just to make things a little fancier. Ba -da -ba. Yeah! There we go. Easy peasy. Uh, what else have we got to do? Uh, there's one more moon just here somewhere. Oh, I remember that where that is. Uh, if we come over here to uh, this hole where Captain Toad is hanging out, we want to head back down here again. We're going to just do it the same way as before. You can get a fish, and then it's much easier to get it down here without drowning because you don't take any damage. But because we have a life up heart, and we'll be getting a moon shortly, which replenishes our health and our air. We have no problems with doing it this way. Uh, we might take a hit, but it's just one hit. I, I think there's some areas where you can't actually go down the well unless you do it the intended way. Uh, but this isn't one of them. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And that replenishes both our health and our air. And then we can just head over here to where Captain Toad is to get back up. Hi, Captain Toad. Okay, so that's that job done. Uh, there's one more moon in here somewhere. Uh, let me see if I can remember where. I think it might be the next ledge up from where we are. Yeah, I think it's... Oh no, I remember where it is. Uh, we have to get out of the plaza and just get on top, basically. Back up here, but where the Style Sisters are, essentially. Uh, which isn't too tricky to reach. We've just got to swim our way up there. There we go. Uh, I'm going to go over here and do it from here, just for the street cred, rather than using the twirler. There we go. So yeah, just see that sparkling spot up there? That is a moon that wasn't there before. It came out of the moon rock and buried itself, I guess. I don't know. It's a little tricky to get up there without restrictions, but not too hard. There we go. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Uh, the invisible coins over there were already there. That's not new. Uh, okay, so now we have, let's say, two more moons to get from the moon rock, plus the other two we need to get elsewhere. Uh, we're going to do the other moon because it's very close to where we are right now. So we could have gotten this before, as soon as we reset the kingdom. Uh, but it is actually a post-game moon because it is the one you get talking to Peach over here. People or the architecture. Oh, I ship it so much. This is so cute. Look how happy little Tiara is. Girlfriends. Yes. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. So yeah, that moon's very easy, but it's sort of post-game. So yeah, she's going to be going over to the Wooded Kingdom next. Uh, as will we once we've, we're done with this sub area. Which is going to probably be the hardest part. So yeah, it's the only sub area in the Lake Kingdom. I mean, there's a couple. It's the only one inside the Moon Rock. 
and it's over here, just near the Odyssey, and it's it's really hard. Basically, what you've got to do, uh, once we make our way in here, basically, there are waves of insta-death poison, which is this stuff, and you have to make your way across all of these platforms to reach that moon, but then there's another set of platforms past the moon that you have to cr cross to get a key, and then you have to make your way back to that platform to get the moon out. You're supposed to use a frog, which is why there's a frog here. I'm going to try to do it without the frog, because that would cancel out our crouching. Uh, it's doable without a frog under normal circumstances. I don't know how doable it's going to be while permanently crouching, so this may be a difficulty. Um, that's my first death, so that's a pretty good start. Touching the poison at all insta-kills you, so it doesn't matter how much health we had. Uh, the fact that we had that life up heart, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm not going to be bothering getting more life up hearts, because it won't make any difference. It's also kind... Actually, no, it's pretty easy to get a free life up heart in this kingdom, I just forgot where it was. Uh, we're going to bonk there, but if we jump quick enough we should be okay. Yep, okay, so that's the first bit. Uh, this part, the platforms get a lot farther apart, which, as you might expect, makes things a bit trickier. We're gonna go over here, so we can build up a nice quick roll. Like that. Oh no! Ah, oh, that was really good so far. Okay, so we need to bounce off Cappy instead of bonking there, obviously. Oh, we are going to grab that first moon as soon as we get to it. Um, it doesn't really make a difference since you have to get there again to get the second moon anyway. Like, you can't do one and then the other and expect, you know, your progress to really be saved here because it resets the beginning of the area and etc, etc. Um, okay, so a long jump is actually enough to get over the waves of poison in that area. Which is useful because there are scary waves of poison everywhere. <laughs> um... Let me see, yeah, okay, so let's basically do what I was doing last time, again. Oop, ah, alright, we didn't quite gain enough height because of that long jump there. But yeah, you can see how this would be a lot easier using a frog because they jump so high compared to Mario, and therefore can dodge the waves of poison without any careful finagling or backflips or anything special. Because we're permanently crouching, uh, we're going to be using backflips every time anyway, so... Oops. I know this is doable. This has got to be, got to be doable. Um, but yeah, it is, it is much easier to do this if you actually capture one of the frogs and do it that way. But we're not going to do it that way. Since frogs can't crouch. It's a well-known limitation of the species. Okay, there we go. So that part is fairly straightforward. There's a lot of platforms to work with, and most of them are reasonably high up, and quite large as well. This part is much trickier because the platforms are a lot smaller and farther apart. So yeah, if we just spend our fall just like that, we should be able... Oh no! Ugh. Ugh. Missed that last platform. Oh my goodness. This is totally doable. Oh my goodness. Uh, of course, the second half of this is much harder. Uh, basically, the platforms are going towards the waves directly, like this direction. So you're going into the waves, but then you have to outrun the waves on the way back. So yeah, first part, that's easy. Easy peasy. Uh, this part is a little scarier. See, there's the key over there. Um, basically, yeah, you have to go across all of these platforms here against the waves, and then you're going with the waves, and the timing becomes completely different in order to get back. It's hard. Uh. Oh, I didn't, I didn't shake roll. I, I just Y button rolled, and I didn't get nearly enough speed. Um, doing a long jump actually sets your speed, but that still didn't give me nearly as much range, which is kind of weird. Okay. Yo. 
Okay, so yeah, we just want to keep backflipping over the waves of poison here. Because that's working out really well. It gives us enough height to make our way through. Uh, so at this part... Yeah, I think I want to long jump to this first platform. Cancel my long jump like that. And then do a cap throw to make it to this platform. Okay, yeah. Uh, that was terrible. Um, the whole... I was just moving in the wrong direction entirely. So that wouldn't have worked. Okay. Um, so yeah, the trick with this bit is just to keep back flipping over the waves of poison. Because the platforms are positioned in a way that makes that relatively easy. Then you get to this part. Um, if this becomes like super duper insurmountably difficult, I am going to capture that frog and do it that way, but I prefer not to if that's avoidable. Ah! Okay, so that first jump surprisingly worked. I don't know why that worked. Um, without, the, without like even diving. I would have thought I'd have to dive to make it that far. Anyway, uh, let's grab these coinies here. Uh, so long as you keep getting some of the coin rings, you shouldn't actually run out of coins from dying, because there's like at least 10 coins in here. Uh, but I'm not really doing that because I'm taking weird routes, so I may in fact be losing coins here. Oh, okay, yeah, that wasn't good. Uh, throwing Cappy suspends you from falling, but not for very long, obviously. So, I believe each ring gives you like three coins. So that's another six plus the ones. Yeah, we're, pr we're probably not losing coins overall. Also, if you stand on a frog, they'll give you a coin for some reason. Who knows? Okay, okay. Okay, dude. Ugh. Okay, yeah, the platform went down too far because I just stood on it. And so I didn't gain enough height to actually avoid touching the deadly, deadly poison. Uh, okay. Oh my god, that was really, really bad. <laughs> okay, uh, there we go. So, yeah, there's, um... These um, grassy platforms here, they descend if Mario stands on them, but not if a frog stands on them. So you're obviously supposed to do it with a frog so that you don't have that problem. But we're not going to do that. Oh my god. <laughs> I think the trick here is to be much faster than I'm being. Um, because then... You can get through between the waves of poison rather than having to dodge multiple waves while not making as much progress. So yeah, when they're at their top height, a long jump is enough to... Like, when these platforms aren't lowered, a long jump is enough to clear the waves of poison, but because they lower so quickly, you got to keep moving. <laughs> okay, okay. Okie dokie. No. Yeah, I need better planning for that piece. Um, because that part's hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cap bounces are also really, really good here for keeping control. Because, as I mentioned before, doing a cap bounce takes you out of the special mode you're in when you do a roll. And lets you land on the ground normally instead of rolling off the little tiny ledge you're on. Uh, thankfully, this is, of course, a section where you're allowed to use Cappy, otherwise we would have problems, and also, I don't know how you do it the intended way, but you should be able to capture a frog. And I rolled off the edge because I tried to use Shake Rolling. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to just go to the close platform and go from there, instead of long, long jump rolling to the, to the farther platforms. Just to try to simplify the, the problem of staying on the platforms. Okay, so yeah, that part, very doable. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, let's do this, and then we can bounce Cappy. Yeah, actually this is a lot easier than I thought it was. See? 
Oh god. <laughs> I just sort of forgot to, to dive in the right direction there, and yeah. Okay, um, but yeah, that wasn't too tricky. Once I got that angle right, basically. That was bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. As you can see, there's lots of coins on that ledge now, because I died there and dropped all my coins. Uh, plus the ones that were already there. It's an interesting gimmick. So, sort of Shovel Knight-y, the way you drop some treasure and you can pick it back up. Shovel Knight, Dark Souls, um, Hollow Knight 2, all those sorts of games. Um, where death means you just drop some of your loot and you can go pick it back up by getting to where you died. Except in this game it's just 10 coins, so it's, it's not really that important that you get back your loot, even though you can. Oh god. Oh, come on. So close. Ah. Oh. Yeah, the problem is that platform's a bit too close to the ledge to just throw Cappy and jump off her. Uh, because if you jump straight towards her and bonk against the wall, you still bonk against the wall. As I'm sure anyone playing this game is familiar with, since it's a pretty basic mechanic. <laughs> um. Whew, I'm surprised I survived that. Okay, there we go. Oh, my goodness. Okay, um, so yeah, let's just get over close to the wall so we can do the flip like this. Wall? The, you know, the, the gap with the poison. There we go. There we go. Okay, so yeah, there's one moon here which we'll be grabbing. Ba -da -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba. Yeah! Okay, then there's the other moon. Um, so to get the other moon, we have to grab that key and come back up here, because the moon will come out of that locked block there. Uh, but to do that, we have to make it through some more poison. Well, the same poison, really, just some more ledges that happen to be in the poison. As you can tell from the names of the moons, you're obviously supposed to do this, uh, with a frog. Oh no! Oh no! So, yeah, the problem is, now that we've died, we have to do the whole thing again to get back over there and try the last bit. <laughs> that was garbage. That was absolute garbage. Alright. Uh, Alright, let's, let's not play terribly. Let's play like good video games players. There we go. Uh, we bonked, but we, we'll be okay if we can jump quick enough. Oh no, we bonked again! <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So yeah, there's, there's two moons to get in here. Um, as I've, you know, I've already explained. Uh, but yeah, the second moon, basically, you have to redo exactly the same thing and then a little bit more. Which I find a bit frustrating. I kind of wish they put the key a bit earlier in the, in the level, so you'd have to redo exactly everything to get the second moon. It kind of makes sense, I suppose, to put it there because you don't have to redo anything if you do it all perfectly. Uh, but, oops, no thank you. No frog for me, thanks. Okie doke. Uh, I believe in the, um, there's a hack of this game called Superstar Mode, which is basically like a hard mode. Um, I think what they did with this challenge room is basically they, it's one guy, it's, it's just one hacker, so I think he could be they. Um, I think basically what they did is change the waves of poison in this room to be much, much faster. Like, swoosh, 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 swoosh sort of speed, rather than what they are right now, which is enough room to backflip over each one. And I believe when they're that much faster, you basically have to dodge a few of them in each go. Uh, I know for a fact that what they did with um, the Lost Kingdom, which has 
like a poison which has poison underneath it, uh, is they made the poison in the Lost Kingdom into this kind of poison with the waves. Uh, instead of it just being, you know, the ground that you have to avoid touching, it goes over the whole kingdom. Uh, because the Lost Kingdom is very vertical, that only affects some of it. Ah. Wasn't quick enough. <sighs> Uh, I might grab a frog just because I've proven the first bit is possible and it will be a lot faster to get to the second bit if I do it with a frog. Uh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, with a frog, the uh, platforms don't move down because frogs aren't as heavy as Mario. Uh, I guess. Uh, it's a bit slower because the frog jumps a lot higher and you have to do the same height of jump every time instead of varying things up a lot. Uh, but it is easier because you don't have to do as many wacky stunts. You just have to jump from platform to platform with some careful timing, basically. As you can see, that way is much, much easier. Uh, but to get the key here, we're going to be using Mario. So let's see how we do. See how we do this time. Don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. Cap, 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 cap. Oh my god. <gasps> oh my gosh. Yeah! Oh my gosh, that was amazing. Oh wow. Okay, so that's that sub area done. Well, permanently crouched. Um, I did use a capture there for the first bit, but I did it without the capture as well, so I think that's fair game. Uh, let's see, 41 out of 42 moons. The last one, I can actually show you exactly where it is. We can go look at it if you want. Uh, so I'm just going to head over there, just, just to have a look at it. Uh, we can't reach it right now. Uh, there's actually a way to, to reach it uh, using a careful stunt from the top of the plaza. Um, basically what you do is the scarecrow up there, you can jump from the top of that with careful timing so that you get Cappy back when the scarecrow expires. You can do a cap bounce off that wall there and you can climb up to that ledge over there. And the moon's on top of that ledge. Um, I don't know if we can get high enough to see it, but yeah, it's up there. Um, there's also a checkpoint up there, which is why there's a little arrow. And there's a painting, which we'll be finding later on, that gets us there. Um, but yeah, so that's 10 moons, and that's the post-game section of the Lake Lamode. Um, B-side done. And this is not even that long a video. Like, 28 minutes, that's pretty good by my standards. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to cash in these 10 moons, and next time we'll be heading on to Steam Gardens. Uh, you might remember last time we were in Steam Gardens, we didn't actually finish the story. That's not because I thought it was impossible, that's because I thought it was too easy. So, we're not going to have any trouble finishing the story in Steam Gardens. Uh, and we'll be doing that first. So, we'll see that when we get back. Uh, but for now... Thanks for watching, uh, thanks for scaring away Goombat by waddling towards her as a tiny crouched space person. And, oh she's back, hang on. Do I just have to walk away to make her just come back, is that how it works? Oh my gosh, that's cute. So adorable. Anyway, um, 